and there's a particular passage in the Bible that talks about uh, talks about moms, uh, wives, women in particular. That's at the very end of the book of Proverbs. It's right in the middle of the Proverbs is right in the middle of the Bible, and uh, it's at the very last chapter of Proverbs, Proverbs 31, 10 through 31. It says there, A wife of noble character, who can find? She is worth far more than rubies. Her husband has full confidence in her and lacks nothing of value. She brings him good, not harm, all the days of her life. She selects wool and flax and works with eager hands. She is like the merchant ships, bringing her food from afar. She gets up while it is still dark. She provides food for her family and portions for her servant girls. She considers a field and buys it. Out of her earnings, she plants a vineyard. She sets about her work vigorously. Her arms are strong for her tasks. She sees that her trading is profitable and her lamp does not go out at night. In her hand, she holds the distaff and grabs the spindle with her fingers. She opens her arms to the poor and extends her hands to the needy. When it snows, she has no fear for her household, for all of them are clothed in scarlet. She makes covering for her bed. She is clothed in fine linen and purple. Her husband is respected at the city gate, where he takes his seat among the elders of the land. She makes linen garments and sells them and supplies the merchants with sashes. She is clothed with strength and dignity. She can laugh at the days to come. She speaks with wisdom and faithful instruction is on her tongue. She watches over the affairs of her household and does not eat the bread of idleness. Her children arise and call her blessed, her husband also, and he praises her. Many women do noble things, but you surpass them all. Charm is deceptive and beauty is fleeting, but a woman who fears the Lord is to be praised. Give her the reward she has earned and let her works bring her praise at the city gate. Now, just to let you know that just because this says a wife of noble character, that doesn't mean that you have to be a married woman for this to apply to you. In verse 10 there, the word for wife in Hebrew can actually be translated woman just the same. So, this could be referring to just any woman. I mean, we can tell by reading here that she is married and that she does have children, but this can actually apply to, to anyone. And in fact, this entire section, it's interesting that this appears at the end of Proverbs because if you've ever read through Proverbs, you know that it's a collection of wise sayings and good advice. And then at the end here, we have this this woman of noble character. So this, this section here, because it's placed at the end of this whole book on wisdom, is actually meant to exhibit all things wisdom to us. At the beginning of the book, wisdom is kind of personified as, as, as a woman who calls out and says, hey, um, if you embrace me as wisdom, then you, you're going to have long life. Good things are going to happen to you. Kings governed by me. Just all of these promises. And now at the end, we have wisdom in action. So you don't have to be a wife or mom for this to apply to you. This, this can apply to, to everybody. So this noble woman, what, what do we notice about her here? Well, what does this woman look like? Number one, she's, she's a tireless hard worker. Just, I just reading through this, I get the picture of somebody who just keeps working and doesn't stop. Just tireless. Nothing stops her. It's verse 15. She gets up while it is still dark. And then in verse 18, she sees that her trading is profitable and her lamp does not go out at night. She wakes up early and burns the midnight oil. 
if you take this too strictly, you could actually conclude that this woman never goes to sleep. I mean, she just, she just constantly is working and, and does, does all of her tasks strongly. Verse, verse 18 stands out to me. She sees that her trading is profitable. She, she's running a business here. In verse 19, it talks about her spinning thread. And in verse 13, she selects wool and flax. Back then, women were not really economic engines, but this woman was. Spinning thread and making clothing was actually the one economic enterprise that that women could do. And here we have a woman who takes advantage of that and does it well. And I had to look up what a distaff was. Maybe, does anybody know what a distaff is? Oh, the picture came up. Never mind. But I had to look it up. So this is, this is what a distaff and spindle are. A distaff holds the, the wool or the flax, and so you, you shear, the sheep, you shear the wool, and then you, you bunch that up, and then that, that sits on the distaff there. And then the spindle is what winds up the wool to make thread. And I actually looked up some YouTube videos on, you know, what, is, what does this actually look like? It's kind of interesting. I've never actually seen that done before. But anyways, you, you, pull, you pull off the, the wool, the fibers there, and then you kind of bundle it up, and then you spin it on this spindle, and it twists it up so that it turns into thread. It looks like a very long and tedious process. You know, just like just something you're just doing over and over and over, just spinning this spindle constantly, just going, 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 going. Something, something, you know, just maybe, maybe boring to some people, just long and tedious. It actually makes this one virtuous. If you if you feel like your work is is kind of boring and tedious, if it weighs on you, maybe. Remember that just because work is boring or tedious, that doesn't mean it's, it's useless. It actually says something about your character, that you persevere. Anyways, going, going back here. Verse 24, she makes enough clothing for her house and has enough to sell. And then in verse 16, this stands out. She considers a field and buys it. Out of her earnings, she plants a vineyard. So she buys a field and she farms it. Now, back then, women couldn't own property. But here, we have an example of, even though maybe her name wasn't on the title, that it was her initiative and her resources that bought this field and made something grow out of it. She was the one who was responsible for it. So she's, she's no woman that needs to be taken care of and, and protected and all of this. kind. She's, she's somebody of, of means. She makes things happen. She's a hard worker. The second thing that we can tell about this woman is that everything, everyone around her is taken care of. She's, she's a blessing to everyone that she is near. Verse 20, it says, She opens her arms to the poor, extends her hands to the needy. You know, when you extend your hand to someone, that, that kind of implies that she's, she befriends people who need a friend. It says she helps people who are, are, are poor, but she doesn't just give a handout, she extends a hand. She'll, she'll even touch them. And one thing that I've read and experienced a couple times at least is that poor people just need to be treated like human beings. They don't just need money. They, they, need, they need somebody to treat them like a person, like a friend. 
verse 15. Gets up while it is still dark, provides food for her family, portions for her servant girls. And then 21. When it snows, she has no fear for her household. All of them are clothed in scarlet. Scarlet was expensive back then. You could only get red dye from certain, certain animals in, in the ocean, so it was really expensive. They didn't have deep sea, deep sea diving equipment back then, so it was, it was hard to come by. Her family's all set. Her household is very warm and well-fed. Everybody has enough to eat. Everybody is warm in winter. And not just warm, they're warm in style, even. And then you notice that there's passages in here, or verses here, about, about her husband. Like, verse, verse 12. She brings him good, not harm, all the days of her life. And then, go to verse 23. Her husband is respected at the city gate, where he takes his seat among the elders of the land. You know, it, it just the passage, it's going along, it's talking about her. She does this, she does this, she's good at that, and look at what she does here and here. And then suddenly we're talking about her husband. And then we go back to her right after that. So we get this one little section where we're suddenly talking about her husband. Her husband's success is because of her. You, you've heard the expression that behind every great man is a great woman. Now, this this kind of reinforces that here. Because we're talking about her and all the good things she's doing. And then suddenly, oh, her husband, he's a great guy. Well, why? Why? Because he's so great? No, but because we're, we're talking about her still. I, I think there is some truth to that behind every great man is, is a great woman because there's, there's a lot of uh, personal character that I have that I have to attribute to my mom or to Deirdre because they, they call me on things and have taught me things. And I'm a better person because of them. When you're in a relationship with somebody, that shapes you. And the better person you are, the better person other people will be for knowing you. This is, this is just basic wisdom. Her husband's respected at the city gate because she is a strong woman, a woman of noble character. And one more thing we can notice from her in this passage. She has wisdom from fear of the Lord. And this, if you read through Proverbs, this is kind of the the underlying idea here. This is kind of the most important part. She's, She's wise because she fears the Lord. If you look at verse 25, she is clothed with strength and dignity, she can laugh at the days to come. Imagine, I mean, when, when I think about the future, and I know at least some of you do too, you can think of all the scary things that could happen in the future. But here, she laughs. <laughs> she laughs at the days to come. She's not worried. She, she fears the Lord. From a human perspective, when you're thinking about the world through our eyes and our minds, the world's a scary place. There's tons of things that are out of our control that could just come upon us at any given time and destroy our lives. From a human perspective, we have a lot of reason to be afraid. But if you look at the world through God's eyes, if you fear the Lord... The world doesn't look so scary anymore. God is in control of all things. Jesus Christ sits at the right hand of God. It was ascension just on Thursday. He rules all things. If you know Him and fear Him, or at least in my experience, the more I've known Him and the more I've feared Him, the less anxious I am. So she doesn't worry about the future. 
Verse 26. She speaks with wisdom and faithful instruction is on her tongue. When she speaks, people are blessed with both love and truth. Now, our words can do a lot of harm or a lot of good to people. When this woman speaks, people are blessed. People are better off because she speaks. That's probably more than most of us can, can brag about. But when I was translating this passage, though, I found something in that, in that phrase, that faithful instruction is on her tongue. In, in the Hebrew there, there's two words that are connected. And one of them, if, if you've been here for a few years and you remember Hebrew words that you should know, one of them was Torah. It means law or instruction. Another one that we looked at was hesed, which means love. Law and love are connected there. And so I want to just take a brief interlude. Law and love, commands and kindness, must always go together. All commands have to be out of love, and all kindness has to come with commands and boundaries. They, they go together. If you try to separate them, you're going to be really lopsided. Either you're going to be careless or you're going to be one of those really strict, jerky people. They need to go together. And this woman does that well. She, she sets boundaries, she has directions, but she's kind and she loves. And she does those, she has a good balance of that. Look at verse 30. Charm is deceptive and beauty is fleeting, but a woman who fears the Lord is to be praised. So everything comes down to whether you respect and revere the Lord or not. If you are the best looking person, who cares? If you are somebody who can charm and if you can get what you want, if you know how to manipulate people really well, so what? If you fear the Lord, that's impressive. We need to look at ourselves and we need to look at each other more that way. Proverbs ends here just like it begins. At the beginning it talks about how the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. And now here it says, charm, pff, beauty, pff, fearing the Lord, that's it. Verse 10, where it says the wife of noble character, that word noble actually means it actually can mean a bunch of different things. Maybe a best translation for it would be strength, strong. This woman is strong. She's a strong woman. And you can tell by how she works, how she fears the Lord, and all of her success. I don't want to mess with her. <laughs> and she blesses everybody that she knows. This, and she's not just a strong woman because, because of who she is. This is a great, strong woman because she lives for the Lord. If she was just talented, if she was just a strong woman on her own, then she'd have a reason to, to brag. Look at, look at me, look at what I've done. Look at my, my family is all clothed in scarlet and... Look at, look, at, um, look at the coverings that I have for my bed. Look at the field that I bought. Look at what I've grown. What have you done? If, if she had done all this herself, she could, she could have a reason to, to look down on other people, pick on them, be mean. If she does all this because she fears the Lord, then that's a whole different thing. If you fear the Lord in your life, Everything that you do changes. You don't have a reason to brag. All of your success 
is given to God. All of the good things that you do for other people will point people to the Lord that you serve. Yesterday, um, Deirdre is up visiting her mom and her grandma for Mother's Day. And so yesterday, I just kind of had a day to myself. And I was just kind of like, okay, what am I going to do today? So I was getting a little discouraged about that. I was like, oh, man, I got nothing to do today. And, but then, because I studied for this passage, I remember thinking, okay, there's this, this woman here who exemplifies wisdom. This, this is what wisdom looks like. And she, she's very diligent because she fears the Lord. So yesterday I decided, okay, I'm going to get a bunch of things done today. Not because they're on the list, but because I fear the Lord. Yesterday was a good day. Because I, re- I had, I had this, this woman and her example in my head all day yesterday. And I got a ton of stuff done. And all the while, even though some of the stuff wasn't all that exciting or enjoyable, I remember thinking, this woman did all of these things and was a hard worker because she feared the Lord. I want to do that too. It was a good day yesterday. When you do your activities because you fear the Lord, that changes everything. Give that a try. Early on we asked, what, is this, what does a noble woman look like? You'll notice here that nothing is said about her appearance at all. We don't know if she has long hair or short hair. We don't know what color her skin is. We don't know if she's tall or short. We don't know her weight. Nothing in here is about her appearance. It's all in the attitude and the actions. That's what matters. She doesn't look like anything. We don't know what she looks like. But, and you know what? That doesn't matter. When you, when you meet somebody, do you size up them by, by their appearance? Or do you look at what kind of a person they are. What are their attitudes? What are their actions? In a day when looks and appearance are everything, we need to be praising personal character. So much today is, is visual. It's just, it's just the day that we're living in. Everything is, is pictures and, and videos. In fact, I... I like to use pictures here when I can because visuals are really powerful. Pictures worth a thousand words. But there's, there's a drawback to that too. Because pictures are so prized and so powerful, it seems like appearance has become everything. So, let's praise one another for our character. So, dads, moms, praise, praise your girls for their character more than their looks. Tell them they look nice, for sure, but call them and praise them on the good things that they do, the attitude that they have. Make sure that you notice and call their attention to when they do something well, with a godly attitude or when they work really hard at something. Guys, especially you unmarried guys, look for a woman who has character. Good-looking women are a dime a dozen. A woman who has solid character, that's hard to find. That's worth far more than rubies. Change your outlook on that. Look for somebody who's godly and virtuous, not somebody who's the hottest or the most popular. The hottest or most popular will stab you in the back. 
or could easily. Somebody who's godly and virtuous will do you good, not harm, all the days of your life. And because wealth and success today are so highly esteemed, we need to praise godliness. We need to praise godliness. We need people, and we need to call attention when people are showing, for example, dedication to prayer. We need to instill that in our kids. We need to encourage others to do it too. I know that there are people in this church who keep extensive prayer lists and even prayer journals. And they follow what God is doing. They ask God for things and they keep track of what He does. And there are people here who are dedicated to worship God. There, there's some people here who are here every time the doors are open. Because God needs to be worshipped. That's, that's really encouraging. That's exciting. There's people who are committed to serve and bless others here. Now, there's a lot of you who do a lot of things. I know at least one person who visits all of our shut-ins more than me. She even brings them cookies. She's committed to serving them and loving them. That's awesome. That's godliness. There's people who are actively and tirelessly serving this body of believers here. And there's a lot of people I could pick on here, but I know that there are some, some women here who make meals just so that other people who might be laid up can not have to worry about dinner. So they make extra meals all the time so that other people will have, not have to worry about that. There's someone else I know who's a student full-time and works and serves on the committee here and helps with Sunday school. This, this woman never stops. Godliness. Let's praise that. Let's notice it. Let's encourage people in that. It's Mother's Day. We need to celebrate our mothers for their character and, most of all, their godliness. But I want to throw something out there for everybody. Anybody can be a mom. Having a kid, that's easy. A strong woman is godly. Just like this passage said. Anybody can have a kid. Godliness is what counts. Let's look for that. Let's bow our heads together. Our Father in heaven, thank you for our mothers. Thank you for the good example that they have been to us the good things that they've instilled in us. Lord, we pray that we would notice godliness and true character, that we would celebrate it, praise it, encourage it. And Lord, that we would always give you thanks and never boast in of ourselves or our own success. We pray in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen.